Hi, I'm John Messer. I'm the executive of the Regional Center of the Great Lakes. I'm also the leadership development catalyst for Luminex. We're talking about the change roller coaster today, and this is the second part of two parts. And so just let me review change roller coaster overall for you. Uh, first, if you put it on axes of energy and time, this is increasing energy, this is increasing time. A change process looks like this for everyone in every organization. Uh, we uh, go through the same processes, amazingly enough, and there are eight stages that have been identified by Gil Rendell. And uh, so let me just cover those. Remember that on the left side, down to the center point, is the emotional, are the emotional tasks, and on the right side are the intellectual tasks. And as I said last time, it's very important to accomplish the emotional tasks in order to have a healthy uh, change process because the intellectual tasks are based on healthy emotional uh, processing. So when we look at the change roller coaster and we know that we're going from the known on the left side to the unknown on the right side, we've come to the point where we've let go and we're letting go into the unknown. We've made a commitment to let go into the unknown, trusting God that he will lead us where we need to go. So what do we have to do then once we've processed emotionally and we're ready to let go into the unknown, into the intellectual side of the roller coaster? Well, those four tasks are basically uh, envisioning the future. So the task there is basically to visualize what I or what we as an organization want to be or want to become in the future. What do, what do we want to look like? What do we want to accomplish? Uh, what are we not accomplishing now? Or how, how do we want to be that's different than how we are now? Once we've envisioned our future, once we have an idea of what that looks like, then we explore the options in the sixth stage. We just look at all of the various options, the possibilities of what that might look like. We may have to come up with our own ideas or there may be other ideas out there that we can adopt, but we do our research, we do our homework. And again, this is all the intellectual, this is the hard mental work of discovery. And then in the seventh step, in the seventh stage, we actually make a commitment. We're committing to action by, uh, after we've explored the options, we choose which option we are going to make a commitment to, and we make that commitment. And it's important as an individual and as an organization that we make that commitment, and we mean what we say. We are gonna give everything we've got to implement this new option. And that may mean you have to give it a, uh, a time frame. We're gonna commit everything we have for three years to implement this new change. And so then after we have envisioned our future, explored options and made a commitment to our actions, then we need to integrate the change. Because remember, a change process is not complete until it's been integrated into our individual lives or into our organizational life. So we uh, commit to making that change and then we begin integrating that into our overall lives. Whether that's an individual thing that we need to integrate or whether that's an organizational uh, choice we have to integrate. That's the completion. And so again, we tend, to, we tend to lean toward the intellectual side, but remember we can't have a healthy change process if we only do the thinking about what we want to be and what the options are. For example, in the RCA today, the Vision 2020 process is actually envisioning what we could be. We're talking about options, but also at the same time, we're doing the uh, emotional work of helping ourselves deal with denial and resistance of facing reality and then grieving what we need to let go of. So we're actually accomplishing these kind of at the same time, but we recognize that it's important that we do the emotional work in order to have a healthy change process so that when we make a commitment to action, it'll be based on reality and health rather than unhealth. As leaders, we're responsible for helping people in healthy change. As organizations, as churches, we need to remember that although it's hard work to do the emotional work of grieving, it's a necessary step in being able to have healthy change, both individually as Christians and organizationally. Peter was healthier after he went through the process of having to face himself and then being restored by Jesus and knowing that it's about grace, not about my will, my power, my way. So I hope this helps you understand as we talk about change, this is an important concept to understand. May you be blessed as you follow Jesus wherever he leads you. Thank you.